Third hour on the line with us is Joe Madison, host of the Joe Madison Show, weekdays 6 to 10 a.m. on Sirius XM Channel 126, civil and human rights activist. His website, joemadison.com. You can tweet him at Madison Sirius XM. Joe, welcome back to the program. Hey, it's glad to talk with you again, Tom. It, it's been a while, my goodness. It's it it been, has been, and we, and and I, yeah. I I hope we can talk more often on the air. Uh, it, you you just brought the house down at the Apollo Theater the other day, um, and in fact we had a clip of it. But I but I figured it would be better to talk with you than to necessarily to play you, you know, uh, to play a clip of you. But it, it just uh, with this, uh, and you, you, you know, you, you and I have been talking about that. Well, you've been talking about this on your show forever, the, the idea of a movement versus a moment and, and millennials. And, and, and before you go off on that, I just wanted to set up one other thing for you and see if this comports with your experience. You know, back in 1980, um, those of us who remember when, you know, we're little kids, when Jack Kennedy became president, Kennedy had this national fitness program and he pushed it out to all the schools. And the way that he did this, the federal government can't order schools what to do and say and what not, what not to do and say, but there are, or there were federal standards for education. They were guidelines, but they weren't requirements. And Kennedy created a new guideline that was a physical fitness one, and it pushed out to every school in the country. And so we were doing jumping jacks in my school and all the Air Force exercises. And, and, and also among those was civics, right? Civics education, understanding how government works and the importance of the vote and all that. So when Reagan comes in in 1980, he puts in charge of the education department, which comes up with these standards, Bill Bennett. Bill Bennett, who famously said... Um, this, this, he, this is his secretary of education, Bill Bennett, who had campaigned on a platform of ending the Department of Education and had this to say uh, just after the Reagan presidency. But I, I do know that it's true that if you wanted to reduce crime, you could, if that were your sole purpose, you could abort every black baby in this country and your crime rate would go down. That would be an impossible, ridiculous, and morally reprehensible thing to do. But your crime rate would go down. So that was Bill Bennett. And so what did he do? He blew up the national standards for education, took civics and government history out of them. And we've got a generation of kids who in many schools, not all schools, but in many schools in America, literally can't name the three branches of government. So, you know, we've got a big lift here, Joe, and I just threw a bunch of stuff at you. It's all yours. Go for it. <laughs> Well, I mean, my God, to, to be reminded of what Bill Bennett just said, I mean, it's right out of the 1930-40 playbook of uh, Nazi Germany. Yep. Uh, that's the first thing that comes to my mind. I mean, it just sent chills down my uh, down my spine. I mean, I guess if I wanted to play that uh, and as it relates to uh, what he said, I mean, maybe if we aborted some white people— uh, we wouldn't have had folks going into a synagogue and shooting elderly people or shooting elderly black people in the back of their head or in, in a Kroger parking lot or blowing up uh, an office building in Oklahoma. I mean, it's it's absurd. The yeah. point I made that I was making came about because of the and, and, and let me give you something in your audience, something to look at, look for. It's, and I've been talking about this for years on my show. It's called the Willie Lynch letter, the Willie Lynch letter on how to make a slave. Now, reality, it's not a real letter, but it talks about the psychology of how to separate and have gang counter gang strategy, separate the, the, you know, the slaves and get them fighting each other, the old against the young, the men against the women, the light skin against the dark skin. And so there was a discussion about, you know, baby boomers versus millennials. And, the, and, I, and so it, 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 I said, wait a minute, let's stop. Let's go back. Uh, 26, the presidential election, 50 year folks, 50 years and older, 60 million of them went to vote, 60 million. And the and the lowest voter turnout was among millennials. Now, my point was, it, it, it doesn't make the the Trump ads any difference whether you're a baby boomer or a millennial. The reality is. They're, they're screwing over both of us. 
you know, grandma, baby boomer, grandma needs Medicare. Um, you know, uh, working mothers with young children that are out here struggling every day trying to make ends meet uh, economically. They need Medicaid for their children. Young, young folk, the college tuition, loans, the fact that the financial institutions are getting a are, are, are charging far more interest for their college loans than they should. The reality was they're coming after both of us. But the one thing I wanted millennials to understand, recognize that baby boomers bled for that right to vote. You know, I heard John Lewis say something that would have fit perfectly with what I said at the Apollo last Thursday, and that is he bled – on that bridge, the Edmund Pettus Bridge, for the right to vote. He almost lost his life. And he said to his audience over the weekend, I'm not asking you to bleed. I'm asking you to vote. And I wanted young people to understand that it's, you, you, it's not about going to a rally, getting back in your car, going back home, or going back to the class. You know, those are moments. We have to have a movement. And the difference between a moment and a movement is sacrifice. All movements require sacrifice. And that's what John Lewis was talking about. That's what Oprah was talking about. And that's why people reacted last uh, Thursday at the Apollo, because they understood that. And so I'm just simply made the point that, look here, millennials, if you can stand in line to get the latest Apple or IT or whatever, or stand in line to get a pair of the latest athletic shoes, then you darn well can get your behind in line to vote tomorrow. And and that's the point I was trying to to make that this this is not we should not be talking about um, millennials versus baby boomers whose turn it is uh, that type of thing because let's understand what happened last pres- in the presidential election. Well, if Hillary doesn't win, I'm not going to. Uh, if she doesn't win the primary, I'm not going to vote. If Bernie doesn't win, I'm not going to vote. The reason we have Donald Trump today is not that the majority of people voted for him, but a vast majority of people didn't go vote at all. And if you get 60 million of baby boomers and you join them with the potential huge number of, uh, of millennials, we win. We win big. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So do, that. Do, you, do you think that it's possible? I mean, I'm, I've been trying to figure out why it is that millennials don't vote. And, and I don't I, I don't have any statistical information to compare uh, this generation of millennials with, for example, you know, uh, what would have been the equivalent generation 30 years ago, 40 years ago, you know, with, with what we call baby boomers when they, you know, first got the right to vote. Although that was, you know, I was, uh, I think, 20 when the voting age went down to 19. And it was a big deal and everybody was paying attention. We, we you know, we passed a constitutional convention or a constitutional amendment. But um, do you think that it's 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 cultural? Is it media? Or is it the conspiracy theory that I floated when you first came on that uh, Bill Bennett, you know, you know, it took a decade or so for those guidelines change, changing to to work their way through the system. And now you've got, particularly in red states, places where they just don't teach government at all in our well, elementary I, schools. You know, I, I, I don't know. It's probably all of, all of the above. It's probably culture. You know, you, you know, I don't know what was happening on your show, but I can tell you that we were tagged, I don't know by who, but, you know, folks are calling, oh, voting doesn't count. Voting doesn't make any difference. Oh, yeah, I'm Why getting those. To, yeah. yeah, you got those. So, it's a know, campaign from the Republicans. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And primarily, let's be honest, it came from the uh, Russian uh, that were, you know, out there trolling. Yep. Uh, uh, African, particularly African-American shows. I know we got hit and it, all of a sudden it stopped after the election. But you know what? It it is really sad 
when you think about it, because the, the, the thing about what I'm trying to get people to understand is, is that the purpose is to check the president of the United States and particularly to check uh, to check uh, uh, Trump. Uh, because you, they don't, you know, you talking about don't understand the the, the 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 three branches of government. Man, they don't even understand, and they need to understand that whoever is the majority on Capitol Hill in Congress, they they make the rules. I, I, you know, I surprised people when I said if a Democratic Congressperson in a Republican majority House of Representatives wants to rent a room. For a reception, let's say a room for Tom Hartman and his group, and they want to, they have to get permission from the Republicans just to get a room for a reception. Wow. Let alone a piece of legislation that needs to needs to be passed or needs to be uh, debated. So this is about. Whoever is in the majority is the one that can control the hearings, is the one that can move the legislation. And that's really what we are talking about. And and so uh, so it is – I don't know about you. I think, you know, when I went to school in Ohio, you could not get a, 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 a high school diploma unless you passed civics. Yep. Yep, same in now, Michigan. that was a fact. You, you, could, you could be a – Look, you could no be longer the case, a, though. Yeah, you could be a straight A student, and if you failed civics, you better take your butt to summer school <laughs> and get that and pass civics because you could not get a diploma. Yeah, yeah. We, and quite honestly, that's the way it should be today. Yeah, I agree. We need to bring this stuff back. Joe Madison, the great Joe Madison. The website joemadison.com. You can listen to him on Sirius XM weekdays every morning, 6 to 10 a.m. Eastern on Sirius XM channel 126. You can tweet him at Madison Sirius XM. Joe, give, give our love to Sherry, and it's great to hear from you. Thanks so much for being on the program today. God bless. The same to Louise. Thank you. Thank you. Good talking with you, Joe. We'll be back.